So a common comparison that we see a lot of people make in real-time events is webhooks versus Kafka. So I thought we'd make a video today talking a little bit about what they have in common, what are the differences, uh, and figure out what use case favors webhooks, what use case favors Kafka, so people can kind of get an idea of what they should be using for their specific use case. So webhooks are reverse APIs or callback URLs. There's a few different terminologies that are used for this, but the basic idea is that I, as a consumer, can tell a service that I'm using that I want to receive an API call to a specific URL anytime a specific event happens. So a very good example of this would be Stripe, for example. So if I'm a Stripe customer, then I would give Stripe a URL and say, Stripe, whenever, let's say, an invoice gets paid, I want to know about it, and I want you to send me that notification to this URL. So that's basically what a webhook is. If you want to know, you know more in depth about what webhook is, comparing it to different alternatives, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to some more resources that we have on our website. So what's Kafka, right? Um, Kafka is an open source product from Apache, and it's a distributed event streaming platform. So it's used a lot for high performance data pipelines uh, and, and really like event streaming. Um, it's, it's similar in a way to webhooks, but webhooks usually are lower volume. And one distinction is that Kafka is a specific product, whereas Webhooks is uh, kind of like an architectural style or an, a style of API, type of API. Kafka being an event streaming platform, there are other event streaming platforms as well. So I think most people who are kind of trying to compare Webhooks and Kafka, they're really talking about comparing Webhooks to event streaming. So what's the difference and when should you use each? So Kafka and event streaming overall, it's really great if you're sending a large amount of messages on a consistent basis. Um, so, you know, maybe you're consistently sending, you know, a hundred messages a second for a month. Uh, and you know that that pace is maintained pretty much consistently throughout the duration. That's when an event streaming platform works very well. And the reason why this works very well for event streaming, but not necessarily for webhooks, is that you have to keep a connection open between the sender and the receiver. Um, so it's more resource intensive, um, and there's more of an operational burden in maintaining that stream. But if you have a consistent stream of data, it's worth it. On the other hand, if your events are a bit chunkier or rarer, uh, it's better to use webhooks. Uh, it's a variable amount of messages, and you can do it to any number of customers whenever something happens. And it's great because you don't have to expend any resources when nothing's happening. So with the Kafka connection or, or the event streaming connection, it's, it has to be open to use it, and even if there's nothing happening. Right. Whereas with webhooks, when there's nothing happening, you're not consuming any resources. But of course, the downside to webhooks is they're less efficient if you're sending a high number of volume, you know, in terms of like, like requests per second to one specific customer very consistently. Um, in those cases, it's probably just better to have an event stream set up. Uh, that extra cost of setup and maintenance is worth it because sending each individual message is much more efficient. Yeah, so in the end, um, we kind of compared webhooks and Kafka or event streams kind of as an entire category. Um, and what it really comes down to is what volume you're sending and how consistently and to whom. So if you have, if you really only have one destination and one customer potentially that you need to send to, it's probably better to do an event stream, especially if it's high volume of events. Uh, very consistently over, you know, whatever period of time that that connection is active. Um, but if you're trying to do it for a lot of customers with variable amounts of usage, variable amounts of uh, throughput, uh, then probably webhooks is, is a better option for you. Um, 
just because it's more flexible and you're not, you're going to have a lot more downtime in that use case. And webhooks are great because you don't have to use any resources during the downtime and you're only using resources when necessary and these events actually happen. So if you listen to this video and you thought, okay, well, actually maybe webhooks sound like what I need because I'm, you know, my customers are asking for events, uh, but the events that they're going to be receiving aren't like super common or potentially just not at that high of a volume uh, per individual customer. You might have a high volume that you need to send, but they could be distributed over all of your customers and each individual customer might not be receiving a ton of events. Um, you should check out Svix. We have a service for sending webhooks um, and it becomes very easy to just implement Svix and you get essentially all industry best practices for a webhook service. Um, and it's just an extremely reliable and scalable solution for sending webhooks to your customers. Thanks.